Welcome back to Magnetic Fields. Today we're going to look at how to use the hand again. Previously you have looked a lot at how charge flow in conductors, you know, like this. Charge is flowing in the metal wire and if the wire is in the magnetic field, this whole wire will experience a force to, I don't know, either direction. Could be down, could be up. Anyhow, it depends on the left hand rule, how you adjust things. But what if now the charges are not bound inside the conductor anymore. What if they're free? They can fly anywhere they want. Ooh, that is what we'll be looking at today. So get the hand out. A quick recap. What's your thumb? Thumb is going to be the force uh, acting on the particle. Because you know, this, we're still looking at force, right? What's the force acting on this? What's the force acting on that? So we use left hand rule. If you want to find the force, left hand rule. Okay. Your pointing finger... It's going to be the direction of the magnetic field as usual. And then the middle finger, last time what did we say? This is where the direction of current, right? And you remember current is where a positive charge would go. So now instead of calling it current, we're going to say, hmm, it's the velocity of a particle, a positive particle. Very important, huh? must be positive particle. Negative means you have to reverse everything the other way. So this middle finger now is going to be the velocity of a positively charged particle moving in that direction. Okay, so V for velocity. Velocity. Alright, so that's the only new thing to, you know, kind of level up a little bit. Okay, let's do some practice first. <clears throat> Let me draw electric, uh, electric, magnetic field for you. So here I have a magnetic field. You see the axis? Axis means it's a magnetic field pointing into the page into page hmm. if you've ever wondered uh, miss why x and zero how did people come up with this thing well they kind of got the idea from an arrow you know bow and arrow like that something like this so imagine if uh, the arrow was coming at you out at you okay you're looking at the page suddenly the arrow poke in your eye you would see a round dot you will see this so they decided, okay, if the magnetic field is poking at your eyes, you will see a dot. Now, if you are seeing the other end where the magnetic field is going into the page, then here's page, what would you see? What is what is this? It's kind of you will see an X la. How to draw a 3D like that? Uh something like this. The tail end of an arrow. So hence you will see an X when the arrow is going away from you. And that's where they got this idea from. I don't know. We kind of stuck with it over the years. So that's why we do X and dots. Okay, into the page. So this arrow, all these, imagine all the B lines are going away from you. Now, we have here a positively charged particle. Let's start with that first. So let's say I have a positive charged particle here. And this particle is going to enter the page. Well, enter the magnetic field with some velocity V. Let's start with that. Where do you think is the force acting on this particle? Now, please do this. Take out your hand. Point into the screen. Like, literally just stick your hand on the screen. Okay, if you are using a touch screen, just don't touch it. Lah, okay. So stick your hand into one of the axes. I got an idea. Point your finger uh, here at the particle into the screen. So poke the screen. Like, literally just poke it. Then... Point your middle finger. Oh, I got to do some twisty. So this is going to be your middle finger. Rotate your hand so that now your middle finger is aligned with the red color arrow. Your finger must still be poking the screen, huh? the f your forefinger. Now, where does your thumb point? Stick out your thumb. You know where's your thumb pointing? Okay. So your thumb actually will be pointing at this position down. This is the direction of the force. Okay, yeah? If you kind of like brain hang, just rewind, play back this again. Go through very carefully. Okay? And what happens when you have a force acting perpendicular to your velocity? What's going to happen to the path of the particle? Will it bend down or will it bend up? Bending down. Okay, so, oh, miss. The particle will go down. Okay, so let me assume it go down. So maybe it's following this path. So we keep going. <clears throat> Here. Okay, let's say we're here. Now we are at this point. And you have a certain velocity. So now the velocity is going to be pointing downwards. So I'm going to draw an arrow like that. Okay, particle has now moved to this spot. 
lost this down. Where is the force pointing? So, take out a finger, point at the screen, point at the black dot, the tiny little black dot, and make sure your middle finger is pointing downwards. Middle finger. See, this is the only place where you get to use your middle finger so much. And it actually helps you in physics. Oh my goodness. So where's your thumb point? If you do this correctly, you should get something like this. Your hand should look something like that. So your thumb would be pointing to the right. I should write here, F is thumb. Oh, interesting. The force has changed directions. Hmm. Let's do one more position. So now, here you know, oh... Particle's going, particle wants to go down, but now there's a force pulling it to the right, so maybe it would go in the path like this. Okay, interesting. Let's do a final point to check. Now the particle is moving this way, kind of like leaving already. It's like bye-bye, getting out of here. So you're currently here. Once again, velocity pointing that way, or current, you know, positive charge. Point at the screen, at the black dot. Now stick your middle finger out. Pointing to the right. Now, where is your thumb pointing? Good sign. It's pointing upwards. So you kind of do this. Huh. Interesting. So the scale is a little bit off. <laughs> but if I drew this properly, you would notice something interesting. You're like, miss, this, 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 this curvy pattern, it looks very similar. If I draw it properly, the moment the particle enters the field, there will be a force. So I should draw the force over there. Okay, when the particle is at this point. Have we seen this picture before? These curved lines, the Fs pointing to the middle. Oh my goodness, it looks like a circular motion to me. Hmm, very interesting. Okay, so we know there's a hint. Something about particles moving in curve patterns. Probably circular motion centripetal force and everything oh my goodness very exciting okay okay uh let's draw another scenario to refresh a bit I'll give you a more challenging one ah this one is a bit harder huh? okay so let's say let's have a horizontal magnetic field now as uh, so a quick recap this will be b and this is your pointy finger you point to the right now so you're kind of like well point like this <laughs> mirror image point there and I have now a negatively charged particle. How about that? Let's throw in a negative charged particle right here in the field. And I would say, hmm, maybe I want to be a troll. And I say, oh, it moves at an angle kind of this way. Oh, ho, ho. How would you use your hand? <laughs> kind of a refresher a bit. Okay, so first things first, point to the right. Well, this way. Point that way with your pointy finger. And you need to stick your middle finger in the direction of this red V. So this is your middle finger. It's like, miss, it's at an angle. Correct or not, uh, miss? Middle finger. Wait, 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 miss. Middle finger is supposed to be for positive charge only. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, my, my, my. So we should not point the middle finger this way. In fact, you should point your middle finger somewhere up this way. Because that's where a positive charge would go. And negative charge in the opposite direction, so... Middle finger up. Where's your thumb pointing? Kind of have to really twist your hand a little bit. But you will notice that your thumb is poking the screen. So, the force... How to write the force? Ah, yeah. I just say the force is going to be into the screen. So this particle will sink into the screen and start turning. Wow. Wow, this one is a challenge. Oh. Okay, so remember you point your middle finger upwards. Oops. Kind of like this. It'll be, it'll be at an angle, but that's okay. Just be not maximum force, right? So, force into the screen. What, what symbol do we use? We use into the screen X. Because if this is your eye, you are seeing the force pointing into the page or screen. So you see an X butt of the arrow <laughs> yep that one's kind of more on the challenge side because it's negative and also at the angle eh? you see the f the velocity ding 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 theta mm, okay all oh, right all right so that is the refresher on how to use the hand but also be aware that now that the charges are free to fly they can just pretty much do some curvy curvy stuff and they're not 
trapped inside a horizontal wire anymore. So there is a formula to calculate the force, or this F, see this F, 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 and we're going to use our good old F bill to calculate it. So firstly, we know from last time that, oh, hey, F equals to B, I, L, sine theta. And that's for force acting on the current carrying conductor. What if now it's a, a charge? Leh? Okay, lah, to be fair, conductor have many, many charge inside, right? Okay, lah, I say positive. Positive, 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 positive. So we can adjust this, this uh, equation a bit to say current. Hmm, there's a way to define current, which is total charge that flow past a point per unit time. Remember this from AS? A definition of current, how much charge passed through in a certain time. When this total charge can also be uh, calculated by the number of charges, so I'm just going to say N times Q over T. Q is each fella's charge. Q, 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 Q. Big Q is everybody that flow past, in a, flow past this point in a certain time. So N means number of them. Like how many of them you count? Oh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 or more. So number of charge times Q, that's the total charge. So I'll write a reminder here. Total charge. And small Q is each individual charge. All right, let's 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 sub this in. So now we want to think in terms of individual particles, not just a current. So we're going to sub that in here. F equals to B. N Q over T. L sine theta. Hmm. Previously, we say L is length of wire, right? But here, there's no wire. So what we can do is this neat little trick. And we know that, hey, I can rearrange this B and Q. L over T sine theta. L is distance traveled per unit time. L over T. Hmm. That is velocity, my friends. So you can do a little nice substitution to clean up a little bit. And what you have is F equals to mm, B N Q V velocity of a particle sine theta. But oftentimes we're not going to think about a whole bunch of particles flying in. We just want to think about one particle. So you can say, oh, for one particle, uh, N is just one. La, one number of particle. La. So you can just simplify this equation to our good old famous BQV sine theta. And this is the main equation to know and remember for particles entering magnetic fields and experiencing a force. What is B? Magnetic flux density. What is V? Ah, this is the new one. So V here is the velocity of the particle. Okay, so well, just now then we say the particle comes in a certain velocity. Now there is a more complicated mathematical form of it. I'll just write it out so you know what it is. It's all the cross products once again. So the original form of this uh, left-hand rule now can be upgraded to be the force, which is a vector direction, depending on where your thumb points, will be the charge times V cross B. Okay, so just note if you appreciate the math behind it, V cross B, hence, you know, BV sine theta times Q. That's where it comes from. Okay, now let's move to this part. We can also define magnetic flux density using this. Just not, Last time we defined it using a, 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 a current in a conductor. Now we can define it uh, by a particle moving in the field too. So how can we define this? Hmm. Let's say V is 1 meters per second and mm, theta. Okay, let's say the, the particle enter at right angles to the field, which is usually the case. Then... How can we simplify this equation? Then this will just become F equals to BQ. That's it. So we, si we simplify all this so that we can come up with an another definition of magnetic flux density in terms of particles. And that will be that the force acting on, not the wire, uh, acting on the particle now. Or I should say uh, the unit charge. Oops, I forgot that. Uh. On a unit charge. Let me why unit charge. Because you can rearrange and you say F. Oh, sorry. 
B equals to F over Q. If you say per unit charge, then you know per the unit force. I'm trying to define B, right? Force. So force acting on a unit charge. And what's the charge doing? Traveling at a, at right angles to a uniform magnetic field. Uniform. What's the speed of the, the particle? We just said it. One meters per second. So one meters per second, law. No? Unit charge traveling at right angles. If you want to insert that, one meters per second at a uniform magnetic field. Did I say to a uniform magnetic field? Oh, in the magnetic field. Oh, sorry about that. So yeah, it's more of just like, oh, what's what are other ways we can measure B? Define B. This is another way for it. Now, what are the conditions? When will there be a force acting on the field, uh, on the particle? Well, one of it is a right angle thing, ma. Right angle. All this F, V, and B all have to be right angles kind of thing. If they're not right angles, still have a force, but it really depends. So here, let's write down the conditions and remind ourselves what we learned before. It's pretty much the same conditions. So number one, your velocity of the particle must not be parallel to the magnetic field. Parallel to B. I'll just say B. What does this mean? Well, if you draw it out, it looks something like this. You have B, 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 B. And then your particle is here, traveling in this direction. Got force acting on it, no wall. No angle also. You must have some angle only got, got force mass. So here is F0. Scenario 2, if we have an angle, maybe something like this. Whoop. V. Ah, this one. Okay. Now, because now this one got angle already. So can. So we'll have a force. You can calculate it. All right. So condition number two is that uh, your charge must be moving. Lah. If it's not moving, cannot. So charge must be moving. So in other words, velocity must not be zero. Because of, you imagine this. If you have <laughs> a, a magnetic field and the particle is just chilling there, not moving, there's not going to be any force acting on it because, hello, V is zero. You plug into the equation. Where is it? Ah, v is zero, everything zero already. So, no. Nope. If you want a force, you must have a moving particle. Number three, the last condition. Uh, this is similar to the one before. The force must be perpendicular to the plane containing V and B, which also means use your hand properly. So if you have a plane like this, okay, and you have, what are the, what are the two things? Ah, you have B and you have the velocity V. They can be whatever angles to, uh, between each other, but they're still in the same plane. So once you use the thumb thing, let's zoom in a bit, you would realize that the force will always be perpendicular to the other two. So let's do this. Force upwards. Oh my, the colors are not changing. Ah, there we go. Force. Perpendicular to the plane. Similarly, if you have it upside down, something like this. Maybe you have V this way. And B, this way. Where will the force be? Well, it'll be pointing down, but still perpendicular to the plane. Sticking out of the paper. Alright, so that is a refresher of how you can upgrade your understanding of force on conductors. Now we are talking about force on individual particles. And they will do cute spirals. So remember I mentioned, no? spirals are like circular motion, right? Well, you can apply circular motion to this idea and concept of force on particles as well. Because since you can say the charge is moving in a circular path, we recognize that as circular motion. So we can say, ask the question, what provides the centripetal force? How come the particle can go in a circle? Magnetic force. So magnetic force here provides, it's an important word, provide the necessary centripetal force required for circular motion or needed lah for circular motion yeah something like that all right so say i now have a negatively charged particle flowing in 
flowing in, entering the magnetic field. So finger into the page, middle finger pointing to the right because that's where a positive charge would go. So kind of the, you have to reverse it a bit. So now you're experiencing a force upwards once you enter into this position, which is inside the magnetic field. So upwards, okay, so your particle start to curve, like just now. Then you do a quick check again. Here, the particle is moving this way now with a certain velocity. So use your finger. Now your finger has to point downwards because that's where a positive particle will go. So you realize now the thumb points to the middle of the circular path. Hmm, circular motion. And then the particle will curve again. Then now it's pointing this way. Velocity is trying to move that way. But once again, magnetic force says, nope, you should come this way. So you can do a circle. There we go. And in fact, you can keep going around and around and around if you are adjusting the setup properly. But oftentimes, they will ask you to do some kind of equation with this. So you need to remember uh, centripetal force here. What provides centripetal force? Magnetic force. So you say that, oh, FB. So now you must remember, well, if you want to find something related to velocity or the radius of rotation of this particle. See, I draw a radius, ah. Huh? Okay. Center to the side is radius. That will be your R. And then I can equate that with my BQV. Sine some angle. 90, I guess. Okay, so in this case, if you say 90 then, because you're entering just nice uh, here, where your velocity is perpendicular to your magnetic field, always. So then you can simplify here and say, oh wait, miss, V and V can cancel out one. So all that's left is MV over R BQ. And you can rearrange this to find anything you want, but one of the things that are very popular is if you say, oh, I want to find the radius of this circular path. Okay, sure, we will do that. So you can just rearrange R equals to uh, M over Q times, what's the other one? Oh, velocity, VB. There. And that's how we can think about relationships such as, you would say, um, if the M over Q ratio increases, then your R also increases. Oh? That's how you can check your... Uh, relationships between variables or you can say oh miss if i make the magnetic field strength will the radius become smaller originally maybe like this big increase field strength now become smaller now then you will just rotate like that oh okay 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 so you say b increase r decrease all this you can tell from the equation itself so scientists were pretty genius they're like oh i like this experiment maybe we can use it to study particles because based on how they curve and the radius of their curve path, you can basically tell their mass and their charge. So this one, let's say I increase their mass. And I reset. Let's go. Oh, so now the curve is so big. So hmm, this must be a very heavy particle. Big mass. Or maybe the mass is still the same. But I say, maybe I increase the charge. Wow, suddenly it turns so, so small on it. So it's click. Then you see, hmm, this curvature radius is so small so they do this and they play with all kinds of experiments and they came up with fascinating discoveries for example for example they did this what is this miss drawing ah no this is what we call a cloud chamber photograph so particle physics or scientists once upon a time they're very curious they smash particles together so bing bang bong explosion smash together then all kinds of particles come out and these particles, they create these tracks that stretch across a cloud chamber. And then you see all the, the scientists, all they're very cute. They see all these curly, curly thing, then they're like, eh? Why some of them, they curl this way, some of them curl that way, some of them never curl. Oh, this whole thing is in the magnetic field, by the way. And they decided, hmm, we will use this to study what are the particles in our existence. Okay, so how do they do that? Here, here's an example. Imagine you have a particle come in, like that. Then, ping bang bong, something happened here. Suddenly, got one thing, one particle come out and spiral, spiral this way. Got another particle come out and spiral this way. Whether it's clockwise or anticlockwise, they can tell whether it's electron or positron. Wo. Okay, if you're curious to you know how, try this. Magnetic field into the page. Can you tell which is positron, which is electron? Hmm. Then they say, oh. 
but this one curve 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 very small but it's also a long one that come all the way here well, it's still curving but not as much so maybe it is heavier maybe it has less charge and they go and study more about it then they say wait 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 hold up what is this did it just come out of nowhere actually no there's something else that appeared something invisible that has no charge and then suddenly bing bang bong something happened suddenly come out two things so i will leave that to you to discover but because of all these cloud chamber pictures and curly curly pictures particle physics was born as a field people are like oh my goodness there are particles we never knew existed it was how they did it in the early days so kaboom particle physics is born a new field and everyone was very excited because we never knew none of this existed so yeah this is uh, a lot of people were doing collaborations and from the pictures of the path uh, these are all the path just from that and circular motion or they can decide and they know roughly what is the particle and then they give it names or oh, muon oh maybe anti-neutrino oh maybe it's all kinds of names kaons baryons mesons all this all coming up hadrons also <laughs> i forgot the hadrons okay very cute one lah. you can slowly go and google more if you're curious to know more about this thing but we don't need to know that too much here so moving forward now that you know the basics you're going to look at more experiments how people use this idea of curving particles to uh, determine properties about particle because like we said we recognize that particles move like circular motion in a magnetic field. Where's my magnetic field? Ah, magnetic field. <laughs> and from there, people can look at the radius and think, huh, this is a heavy particle. This must be a light particle, very light mass. Then increase the charge. Hmm, this must be a very large charge. And they kind of do all kind of experiment now. Okay, negative charge will turn one way clockwise. Negative charge turn the other way. Oh, if the magnetic field is pointing out of the page. So all these things, very fun thing. So velocity selector will be up next. How do you use this idea and experiment to choose particles amongst a whole bunch of particles flying around? That's all for this video. See you in the next one about more particles flying around in magnetic fields.